Now, this is not a photorealistic look. This is a uh, graphic interpretation. This is more for motion graphics. This is something you would apply to text or, or, or graphic or an animation, but not necessarily for trying to do uh, you know, special effects compositing or something like that. Okay. So um, having said that, let's uh, move on here. So the first thing we've got to do is have After Effects open and we have to uh, start a <coughs> new composition. So I'll go new composition and I'll call it uh, text because I'm going to make some flaming text and I'm going to go with the 1280 by 720 but you can make this anything you want and I'll go with the uh, 120 frame length here. So click OK and a black uh, background color. Click OK and then the next thing I want to do is put in some text so I'm going to click the text icon up there come in here and type in uh, fire. I've chosen impact as my uh, font simply because it's got a lot of surface area so it's a nice fat font. Um, a lot of surface area there to show off the flames. Okay, And then I'm going to move this down. Um, I could move this right down to the bottom actually because if I wanted long lots of flames here I probably should move it right down to the bottom but I'm actually going to move it up there a bit. You know, for the tutorial I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so um, so we've done that. And right now what I can do is give this some colour of flames, okay, just before I do anything else. So I'm with this selected, I'm going to come up to Effect, go to, um, I think it's Generate and Ramp. Okay, so I want to put a ramp on this right away you can see that we've got the black and the white so we've got a light color down there and we're going, going up to darker here okay and this is a controller for the, the black there now I'm going to change the black into a, um, a reddish orange sort of color there sort of like uh, I don't know sort of like that and I'll change the white into a yellow bright bright yellow color probably more up towards, in fact, way, way bright, you know. And um, I'll go back to that orange color. I think that needs to be a little uh, redder. So I'm going to just bring that down a bit more. And I'm going to also take the controller or the start of the ramp, click on this so I can see where that is, and bring that down, you know, take advantage of getting the full uh, breadth of the ramp here. Same with the bottom one. I'm going to move this one right up to there so that we get absolute brightness of color there and absolute uh, fullness of color at the top there of the ramp. Okay, So that's uh, giving us the color on the text. And the next step is to actually create the flames. So we're going to be creating the flames uh, using displacement. Okay, And displacement is something that uh, will, will be applied to this layer. Um, so what we have to do is create a displacement map. So I want to create another um, composition for the displacement map and I want that composition to be exactly the same uh, size and length as this one. So what I do is I select this comp and I come up to uh, composition settings, open it up and just basically confirm these settings that are already here and go OK. And then I come up again to composition and this time I create a new composition. And that's just going to inherit all the same settings. Okay, so I'll click OK. Oh, I'll change the name first. So I'm going to change this to displacement. There we go. And click OK. And now I'm going to inside of this new comp. So we have two comps here. We have text and displacement. And in the new comp here, I'm going to create a, uh, a new solid. And it's white. That's OK. And I'll just click OK there. And um, now I will uh, want to put an effect on here. I'm going to, I want to put some, uh, uh, what do they call it, fractal noise. I want to put some noise on this to create the displacement. So I'm going to come up to effect. And I'll go to uh, noise and grain, 
and down there you can see turbulent noise so I'm going to choose this one and um, I could just go with the uh, default uh, basic fractal type here but I'm going to choose um, where is it dynamic twist you see with dynamic twist you have this sort of um, if I play with the evolution you can sort of see this this sort of form already is a little flamey you know so that's why I've chosen it and um, what we need to do now is change the shape of this a little I'm also going to change the noise type to from soft linear to um, spline just so you, just so we can see what's going on here block it looks like that that's not going to give me the flame look linear it's okay that that could work and um, soft linear is just sort of a variation on that spline I don't know why I've chosen it I think it's just maybe because I like the word spline but um, it does have a, a different look so um, perhaps that's why I've chosen it and um, what we want to do is just change the shape of this a little bit because you can see there's a lot of uh, settings here so we're going to um, go to the transform open that up and I'm going to um, play with the scale so you see here scale if I just size this up it's going to get bigger and smaller like that but what I actually want to do is change the I want to um, squish it and squash it you know so I need to um, have control of the scale here independently uh, you know um, the um, X and the Y values so it, where it says uniform scaling if I turn that off so I uncheck this it then allows me to use these two sliders so I can play with the uh, the height and the width independently so um, that's what I want for in this case so I'm, I'm just trying to um, sculpt with these sliders a shape here that's going to look more like flames and that's pretty that's actually quite good there so I'll probably go with this and the other thing I want to do is um, maybe adjust the contrast a little bit so I'm going to just pull this up a bit more okay um, okay so that's that's basically giving me the the flame look here okay and um, and just so we can see why we're doing all this I'm going to jump back into my text comp okay and um, and then go back into the projects window here so click that on and what I should be doing is putting all my comps into a, into a folder so I'm going to create a new folder here and just call it comps and um, drag all my comps into the comps folder okay that's just going to make things a little easier for me to you know, find things anyway you should already know this stuff okay so um, so I've got my uh, text here down there and I want to put a displacement on it so what I have to do is take my displacement map and drag it down into this comp okay and then turn it off because we don't need to see it um, it just needs to be in the same comp and then I'll come to my text and I'm going to use uh, come up to effect and I'm going to be looking for displacement and it's under distort I think yeah so under distort which is makes sense that it should be there um, I'm looking for displacement map now there's you see there's turbulent displace and is there any other types of displacement possibly but this is the one I want okay so I'm using displacement map so I'm going to click on that one and um, right away nothing happens because I need to choose the correct displacement map up here where it says displacement map layer which is referring to other layers in the comp I'm going to choose displacement which is the name I gave that map there okay. so and again you don't really see anything happening there but um, if I now play with these values you see that they're basically taking on that fractal noise pattern I'll just turn that back on so whatever is going on with this pattern here is sort of affecting the shape of this uh, this layer this text this text layer okay so you know I can play with this as much as I want and um, this one here is sort of controlling the vertical displacement and this one's the horizontal okay so it's a combination of using these to sort of get the look you want okay now I'm, I 
obviously going to need a lot of vertical because I want uh, flames to sort of build up that way and you can take these values further up so you can see that I can really push this you know and that's actually looking fairly flamish actually but um, I'm not really going to have it at that level um, I'll just but anyway that's just to show you the effect of, of what's going on there okay so I'm going to just go back to my displacement map now and um, I want to actually, because at the moment nothing's going on, it's not moving, and flames, of course, move, so we need to get some movement in here. Now you see in the um, turbulent noise effects panel, you've got evolution, so you can make it move that way. And you can also, um, well, you can actually animate all these these things, but the only ones that we're going to use are evolution, and we're also going to use this one, which is offset turbulence, which means that if I click on the little uh, target thing here, you'll see that at the moment it's set right in the middle, but if I move this around, wherever, wherever I take that, it's going to move the uh, flames about. So flames are going to move up, right? They're going to flames rise like that. So I'm going to be animating that going up. And that'll give me rising flames. So I'll, I'll put this, actually it doesn't matter where I put it because it's just going to be offset. Um, so I'll uh, create a keyframe for that. So I'll click on the little stopwatch there. Click on my layer. In fact, I'm also going to uh, create a keyframe for the evolution. So I'll just click on that as well. Then if I come to my layer and hit uh, U on the keyboard, it'll open up those two uh, keyframes so that we can sort of see them there. I'll just move to frame 10. And I'm going to come to evolution and I'm going to um, just move that around a bit. And then I'll go to my offset uh, turbulence, this one, and I'll just move that up a bit. So in 10 frames, it's going to move that, you know, that, that fast. It might be too fast. Uh, we'll do a little preview and just see what that's looking like. Now, because I'm on, on a laptop, I have to come up here to do a preview, but um, normally it's just hitting the, uh, I think it's this, key, I can't remember because I'm not on my um, PC, so I can't remember, but it's a keyboard you hit. I just can't remember what it is, but actually this looks pretty good in terms of the speed. It might be a little fast, so I might uh, slow it down a little. Okay, I think this will work. That's probably okay. But you can always adjust this stuff later, so um, it's not that big a deal. And um, what we're going to do now is use some expressions so that we can continue this this uh, animation further because at the moment it stops at this point and we want it to continue the full, for the full length. Okay, so we're going to use some expressions here. So um, what we do is um, for expressions, you just come here to this where we where, where got the um, the little stopwatch. You hold down the Alt and you click on it and you get this little uh, requester here where you're meant to write in an expression. Now, the expression I'm going to use is one that's just going to allow this, what what happens between this keyframe and this keyframe to just continue for infinitely beyond this point, okay? And it's actually, I think it's called, um, it's probably called continue, but um, I'm not great at expressions, so what I do is I always just have a, um, a notepad note any expressions that I, I like to use I'll put them in a notepad into a, or into a um, yeah into a text file and just come and get them so the one I want to use is uh, this one continue so I'm just going to copy it control C come down here and just paste it in there control V and, um, and there we go so that's done so it should continue beyond that point as you can see and we have to do the same thing to the other one as well so um, offset turbulence we have to put an expression on that so I'm selecting the little uh, the uh, stopwatch there hold down alt and click on that paste the same expression into there so this now continues forever and um, if I want to play with the timings of this I could actually I could actually do this if I wanted it faster move those
this closer together, and then that means that the flames are going to be faster. If I want them slower, I can pull them further apart, and that means that the timing is going to be um, slower here. So if we do a um, preview, so that's slower, right? And if we uh, want faster flames, I can just pull these in closer, do another little preview. So a lot faster. So the advantage of using the expressions is that I can then just quite easily just grab these keyframes and adjust timings um, without even having to come in here and play with these things. So, But I can also come in and play with this, but it just also means that I can just use keyframes as well. So that's really good. That's a, that's a nice fast way to work. And we'll just have a, a look over here and see how this is going. I might have to pause this uh, tutorial for the time being. Okay, it's um, it's one week later, and I'm going to finish uh, today. So um, we're going to move on. So we've got the uh, fire burning for the length of the comp like this, and uh, I want to now be able to turn on the displacement on and off, so that the text will appear to slowly catch a light and then flame up a lot more and then be unreadable. You know, so um, we're going to go back to the displacement layer and do all of that inside of the displacement layer itself and the way we're going to do it is by um, using a solid on top of this image and the solid is going to be a neutral gray color and the neutral gray color will actually cancel out the displacement I'll come up and I'll go to layer new solid see it's already got a gray color here which is if we look along down here where it's B for black, it's on 50%, so it's 50% uh, black, and which means it's basically grey, mid-tone grey, so I click OK. If I click back now to the other layer here, you can see that it's no longer displaced, so that proves that uh, this will cancel it out. And then I'm going to use a mask, so I've clicked up here to the rectangle and I'm going to drag out a big mask and I'm going to <coughs> invert the mask so that all my displacement is revealed and we'll just have a, another look back here so you can see that that's how it's working okay so I think this should illustrate the, um, the, the, the whole point now this is how it works so we're going to animate uh, this line coming down um, one thing I'll do first, but is I'll just put a, I just want to soften that edge, so I'll just put a feather on it. Okay, and we'll look back and we'll see that that now looks pretty a nice transition between the two. And we'll just, anim we're going to animate this. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, double click that and bring it up a little bit. I just want it to be not affecting the text. And I've set a keyframe there for the path. Then I'll I'll put that on uh, frame 10 because I think I want at least um, 10 frames of, of nothing. And then um, we'll go to frame 30 and I'll just uh, bring this down to about there. Let's see where that, where that sits. I think that's a little too much. No, I just want it licking at the very top there. So if you push it up a little more. Yeah, that's probably about where I want it there. I'm going to actually bring this down to frame 20, so that's going to happen fairly quickly into in the 20 frames in. It's going to um, be starting to flame up, so there we go. So I want it to sit like this for, for a period before it really catches a light because, you know, we, we, we want to be able to read, read the text before it sort of totally burns away. I want it to sit there for a while, I'm going to have to at least, uh, say for frame 50, I'll uh, put another keyframe here, so it'll just hold in that position up until frame 50, and then say at about 70, I'll uh, double click again and bring this down more. And then um, at frame uh, 90, I'll uh, bring it down even further. Let's have a look at how that's going to look. So it's pretty well um, at this point totally on fire. So I'm going to do a preview now just to see how it's looking.
terms of timing. So there's our flames, they're sort of just starting up there and then it sort of gets more intense. At least I think that's pretty much what I want. So um, uh, one thing we do need to address but is that the displacement at the moment is all one way. It's just going straight up and we just want some distortion on the sides of the text as well so that the displacement map uh, effect opens up and I'm just going to play with the horizontal displace. So I'm going to push it um, yeah, in that direction. So I'm pushing it over towards this side because I want the overhangs on the fonts to look like they're also catching the light. So I think I'll favor it in this direction. And let's have a look at that now. That's pretty good. And um, now, um, what we're going to do now is just add more um, control on the flames themselves. And the way we're going to do it is by utilizing uh, copies of these compositions. So straight up, you might not understand exactly what I meant by that, but what I'm going to do, I'll just show it to you. So I'm going to come up and select both of these uh, comps and use control D on the keyboard to duplicate them. And uh, so I'm going to open up now text 2, which is just a copy of it. And we're going to, uh, on the text layer down here, create a mask and um, mask away. I'm just going to invert that mask. I just want to, um, <coughs> I just want the top part of the uh, flames. Okay. And then I'm going to open up the displacement map controls and I'm going to exaggerate the vertical displacement so that I can get the longer the longer flames. Okay. Now we've got a Make sure this actually looks correct. So um, there might be a bit of playing around. We can push it out maybe that way or this way. And the idea here is that this is going to work in conjunction with the other one. So we're in the end, we're going to be like combining this one and this one together, so that this effectively is just dealing with longer, streakier flames on the very top of the text, and um, I'm not worried about the base at all. I'm going to go to the mask and again feather that off a little bit, just a touch, maybe a little more. So the idea here, and also another thing I did, was I went to the displacement map too, so I clicked on that. So this is a duplication of the, uh, the other displacement map. And I just changed things a little bit, so I just went down to um, the uh, white solid, the, the actual fractal noise, and I probably just uh, played around with, you know, the um, maybe I changed the, possibly inverted it, or changed the brightness or contrast, or actually changed the trans transform. So I might have. Uh, just change the scaling a little bit, just so things were a, a touch different. Um, I'm going to also stretch it out a little more that way. Um, that just means that uh, these two layers of text are going to have slightly different displacement maps on them so that they're not exact duplicates of each other. Okay, so that's looking fairly nice for streaky long flames there. Okay, um, so that's good. So. Um, Anyway, the next step is to make a new composition that we're going to drop these two comps into so that they can be combined together. So I'll come up to composition, I'll go new composition, and luckily it's still got all these same settings in there, so I'll just click OK. I'll give it a name, I'll call this flaming text. Okay, so before we had text, and now it's flaming text. I'll click OK and it's just currently empty, but I'm going to take these two comps and just bring them down. They're both uh, sitting on top of each other, okay? Okay, so that's the two combined. I think uh, this one I'll put on top. And 
And um, one thing you might notice is at the very beginning there, I've got this rather odd looking thing going on there with the uh, flames coming out of nowhere, but that's okay because I don't intend for this layer to show itself until, um, at least until somewhere along about here. So I'll just be using the transparency, so T for transparency, and I'll set a keyframe here and about here I will uh, put another keyframe. I'll go back to that keyframe and take it down to zero. So those longer flames are just going to come up at a certain point. You know, they are quite long. Um, I'm not sure if they're too long, but uh, yeah, I might go back to the um, text to go back here and just. Uh, bring the, uh, the uh, vertical down a touch, I think they're a little bit too much, okay, this is what we've got now, it's looking okay, um, one other thing too is if I put this on an additive, this layer, you see that uh, these flames sitting on top of the other ones are going to look a little more, uh, you know, going to glow a little more so that's going to look nice um, this yeah so that's looking pretty good okay so I'm happy with this to um, just go with this as, as a flaming text element um, I think we've lost a little bit of texture we've been we're losing texture in the um, in the flames so yeah what I want to do is actually I want to see some flaming or some sort of fire in this area as well and at the moment it's more or less just yellow to red I'm going to take uh, one of these I'll just take a displacement one these are, these are the displacement maps I'll go control D and copy this and um, open it up and I might take the uh, the grey solid off it or actually I think what I'll do with this one is just increase the feathering on the mask okay so that uh, more texture gets revealed so it goes down like that and uh, you're probably wondering what's what I'm going to do with this but um, just uh, bear with me so this one now is going to become um, I'm going to call this it's not a displacement map it's going to be called um, a uh, texture okay so I'm going to use it now as texture so this is now a texture that I'm going to use so you can see I've actually just increased the uh, contrast as well on the uh, fractal noise and now I'm going to also I want to tint it a color so I'm going to go and put a, uh, a new uh, adjustment layer on top of this and so the adjustment layer will affect everything underneath it so I'll go to effect now and I'm going to put a uh, color correction on this I'll put a tint on it and I'm going to change this tint to a kind of an orangey uh, yeah kind of an orange tone here a bit dark red or I can always play with this and see what works I'll leave it there and um, and then I'm going to come to my uh, flaming text layer and I'm going to drag down the texture put that there this is going to get used later on okay so um, we'll come back to using this um, what I want to do now is finalize this I think this is I'm happy with this I'm going to just go with that for the tutorial it's good enough so now um, the next step is to take this into um, what would presumably be the final comp in the whole chain of comps okay so I'm going to create a new composition a new composition again all the same settings are still here so I just click OK and I'm going to drag in the uh, flaming text down here sorry this uh, flaming text is actually outside of the comps folder so just good housekeeping I'll just put it back up there so it's all sitting inside the same folder here and I'll take a uh, flaming text and bring it down 
So this is basically the element that we're going to be using from here on. The element that's ma been made up of all these other tops, okay? Um, so from now on I should just be able to work in this one. And the first thing I'm going to do is double it up. So I've got control D. So I've got two comps sitting on top of each other. And um, I'm going to um, make one of them additive. So you can see it's already much brighter. And um, I can also put it, say, a effect blur. Put a um, fast blur on it just to give it a little bit of a softer edge there and to make it glow a little bit. I'll also put a little bit of a blur on the one underneath it as well. You can come up here and just select that, Control C, copy it, and put it down onto this one. Control V. So they've both uh, got a little bit of blur on it. I think this is too blurry, so I'm going to take it down to maybe a 2%, a 2%, uh, <coughs> or a value of 2, 2 pixel blur. Okay. I'll just type it in 2. Okay, so, um, and then um, what I'm going to do is bring the texture layer. So I'll just bring this texture layer in, drop it in over the top, and um, what I want to do now is take one of these layers. So I'll just take any one of them, just say that one, control D, copy it, put it above the texture layer, turn it off, and then just use it as a track map. So I'll go, um, I think it's this one, like, like so. And um, so what that's doing is, um, you know, using the flaming text as a mask on the texture layer, so I've just got this now, this element, which can overlay on top of the other flaming text to provide some texture inside of this area here. See, because of the blur, um, it's got this outline on it, so I'm going to take uh, the blur off this layer, so I'll just turn that off, okay, and um, come here, and I'm going to use a, uh, we can just experiment here, so I'll just try it firstly, multiply, that's not really working, um, I'll try add, that's going to just not work, um, um, this looks better, uh, what I've done is I've turned off the, this was before this was on additive, this layer here, I had that added, added to the one underneath it, and that was just blowing it out too much, so I've just put that back to normal. Uh, in which case it's actually not really doing anything that much, so it's debatable whether it even needs to be there now. Um, this setup is a little different, I'm going to delete it. Um, this setup now is a little different to the one I had in the original comp that I showed you at the beginning of this uh, tutorial. So I'm not quite sure what I've done differently, um, but that's okay because um, I don't really necessarily need, I wasn't trying to show you exactly how to create exactly the look I had anyway, I just really wanted to give you the basics of how to make this sort of flaming look here, and I think uh, basically you do all have pretty much the uh, nuts and bolts of it here, so um, in terms of adding these enhancements and trying to um, experiment with different sorts of overlays and so on, because um, you can see I can get different looks here. Um, there's no rule book here. I mean, it's depending on what. It's just uh, it's intuitive, you know. So this looks pretty interesting uh, on additive. Sorry, on additive, it looked pretty nice too. Um, and I'd probably be doing um, something where it would start off like this, and I'd fade that up as the flames were starting to lick, you know. Um, so I could be fading that up. Um, so that's the basics of this. And then there's one more thing now that I want to show you. So this, this is not actually going to be the uh, final comp here. I'm going to actually, um, it could be, I could go back into um, flaming text. Yeah, okay, so flaming text. What I'm going to do is go to this one, the, the one that uh, constitutes the two elements together. And I'm going to put in a new um, adjustment layer sitting on top of everything. And 
the effect that I'm going to be putting on this uh, adjustment there is is a distortion. I'm going to put uh, distort and um, it's mesh warp. Okay, so mesh warp. I'll put that on, and you'll see how this works. Is basically this will allow me to actually distort this text even further. This will allow me to start to actually uh, move and push around the image. Okay, so. I don't need this many control uh, segments here, so I'm going to just come to the rows and columns and bring those down to something a little more manageable. So maybe uh, about that many is enough. And so the way this works is um, I'm going to come down to distortion mesh, and I'll uh, I'm not going to be using it until it starts to get a little more flame-like, so about at this point here. I'm going to come to the distortion mesh uh, stopwatch here and click on it to create a keyframe. And I'll just open this up so you can see the keyframe there. Then I'll drag it along to about here. Click again on mesh warp. And the way this works is you can grab these and just sort of start to bend and shape the image. I might actually, oh yeah, that's probably looking nice, but I might see if I bend it the other way. Yeah, that could also look like a sort of a heat vector or something. I'll just drag this one up as well. So you'll see that what happens is over time that gets animated up, okay? And I could say, then also grab this one over here and uh, click on it. drag this up and uh, warp this a bit more, warp that over. So really what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get some more organicness into the flames there so that it's even, you know, there's more happening than just uh, displacement. And uh, you can just continue to work with this stuff and uh, move it around. And I'll just continue doing this. So just, um, you know, there's a tendency to continue to push and pull it further, but I'm going to actually go the opposite and push it down and maybe come to this one and bring this one up. You want to keep things moving a little bit, but you want things to be kind of unpredictable the way flames would be. And um, so let's see how this is looking. Well here's the uh, preview plane and um, you can see it's actually looking not bad. Uh, these are, this is a different look to the preview that I showed you before but it's, a, it's not a necessarily a worse look um, or it's not necessarily better, it's just a different look. Um, I'm actually liking it quite a bit. We've covered the basics of how to create this flaming text look and everything else that you saw in the uh, preview were just enhancements that I added, like I flipped the, this layer upside down and created a reflection out of it. I added some particles to get sparks and I put a background in there, but that's all stuff that, um, that's got nothing to do with the flaming text part of it. So. This pretty much, um, I think this is the end of the tutorial. It's gone on a little too long, so you, sh you know anything else that you might want to do with this, that's that's up to you to experiment with. Um, I've given you the basics of it, and uh, what you do with it, that's up to you. So I'll leave it here. I hope it's been uh, helpful, and I'll just say goodbye.